Thank you for joining me one more time. Um, this is the third video of our How to Lead Worship video series. Um, one thing that I wanted to say before we get started in today's session was uh, these lectures are supposed to be building upon each other. So um, I might not say everything that I want to say about a certain topic in the video of that topic, but then uh, as I press on, as I see that it becomes relevant and I see that I forgot it, I will um, uh, say it in that lecture. So as you go along, if you hear something in one of the lectures that doesn't really make sense, uh, I encourage you to go back and uh, see if you can find uh, a topic, a video topic sentence that fits that. Like let's say, for instance, today we're going to be talking about burnout. Let's say uh, in, a few, in a few weeks, I talk about something to do with stage presentation and then I say something about burnout and you're like, that doesn't make, really make sense. Um, I encourage you to go back and find the video, which is, would be this video, um, and hopefully that will give you some background on that. Um, these videos are not meant to be all-inclusive. They don't have everything that the chapter uh, of my book says. Um, it's just meant to give you uh, really a basic overcap, gives you the main points of the book, uh, help you to where if you don't want to buy the book whenever it comes out, you don't have to. All the key points, all the main information will be on these videos. Um, the book, really, I'm going to go ahead and get it, pu get it published You know, after I'm done with these videos. Uh, that's just as a resource to help you. And so, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help you guys where you don't have to spend a whole lot of money. Uh, pressing on. Um, uh, another thing is uh, why I'm spending so much time on the attitude aspects. We're not even really talking about how to lead worship, and I know it can get a little bit irritating because you probably were watching these videos to find out about leading worship. Well, in a roundabout way, I am kind of talking about how to lead worship because... Um, uh, I wrote down here, uh, spiritual life reveals um, what's going on. Basically, whatever is going on in here will eventually show itself out here. From Jesus says, you know, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Uh, it, the basic same principle applies. You know, if, for instance, if you're not spending time uh, in your word and in prayer and in communion with God, and then you go up on the stage and expect to have just like this Holy Spirit outpour and for all the people to to just, you know, totally respond wonderfully, it's not going to happen. Um, whatever's going on in here will eventually mirror itself onto the audience. If you're being prideful, that's going to show itself that people are going to respond negatively. Okay? Now, I know worship, worship is not all about presentation, how it looks. Absolutely. It is not all about that. However, some things people allow to keep them from worshiping. For instance, um, if your guitar is out of tune and it sounds kind of funky, you know, and people can hear that, they're probably going to allow it to bother them to a degree where they don't worship. So whereas God can still move without the perfect lighting, the perfect instruments, etc., without practicing all that, yes, God can still move. God is able. However, if there's anything that you can do to encourage their worship experience, I encourage you to do it. Um, now we're going to be moving on to uh, burnout. Uh, I want to re recommend a few books. Uh, first of all, Restoring Your Spiritual Passion by Gordon MacDonald. I don't know if I have done this before in a previous lecture, Well, I'll go ahead and throw this in here. Um, uh, Christian Counseling by uh, Gary Collins, Dr. Gary Collins. And Top Ten Mistakes Leaders Make by Hans Stenzel. Um, uh, also, uh, I'm going to post, uh, post some links down below to help you find some Jeff Dio uh, videos uh, on worship as well as some other uh, helpful uh, ha uh, tips on how to lead worship. And I'll try to hook them all into this video, so from this video you can go to all those other people's uh, resources, and hopefully that will really help you. Um, uh, don't worry about the names of the authors of those books that I just mentioned. It'll all be written in the description below. Um, okay. Uh, as I stated before, um, there's really top, there's really three main uh, issues with attitudes, and that's uh, burnout, bitterness, and adultery. Those are the 
three main things that will hit almost everybody's ministry. And so I want to touch a little bit on each of them. And then to close up the, the this topic of attitudes, we'll talk about some other ones like pride and, and uh, uh, stuff like that. So really, um, I'm trying to see where I want to go with this. Uh, really, let's, let's, let's focus on burnout now. Um, before, before you ha have burnout, um, so there's going to be uh, tips on, on how to resist burnout, how to hopefully not have burnout in your ministry. Um, number one, don't be overworked. Uh, just because there's an opening, it does not mean that you are meant to fill said opening. Um, know when is too much, you know. Um, when you're doing something in the church, make sure that you feel like you're supposed to be doing it. Um, and I'm just saying, oh, well, I don't really feel like doing this right now. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, like, um, if, you're, if, you're, if you see an opening in the church and you pray about it and you feel like God is specifically telling you, I want you to do that, you know, then that's different. But if you're like, oh, someone needs to do this, I think I'll do it. And then two months down the road, you're like, I was not thinking. I wish I could just get out of this. I don't even like teaching these kids, et cetera, you know, whatever. Um... So, so that's really the first thing, is just don't be overworked. Uh, if somebody asks you to do something, genuinely think and pray about it before you say yes or no. Um, number two is uh, take breaks. Regularly take breaks. Um, take them when you feel overworked, and also when you don't feel overworked. Um, I would recommend nine to, every 9 to 15 months, take a vacation. Um, that's long-term vacations. And then I also suggest... Uh, uh, short-term vacations, like uh, a night of the week where you have family time, something like that, you know. Um, that way it kind of gives you a little bit of a relaxing. We, we as people, we're not meant to live up tight all the time. We have to have some time of our schedule when we're able to just wind down and, you know, just you know, deal with something else. Because, let's be honest, you're not going to be just dealing with this, uh, whatever ministry you're in. You're going to be dealing with your finances, you're going to be working, you're going to be, you know, if you're a student, you're going to be doing schoolwork. You, if you have kids, you know, there's all these different things you've got going on. You're not going to have all the time in the world, you know. So you just need to limit your time and then work out a, a schedule that works for you. Um, uh, uh, one thing that I would, I, I would suggest is accountability groups. We'll touch on this later, so I don't want to spend too much time here. But um, really, ha uh, with accountability groups, it'll help you to not become overworked. And it'll help you to... Um, um, to be able to share stuff, private stuff with someone else. Um, also, notice that there's a difference between, difference between doing too much and doing too little. For instance, oh, well, I don't want to get overworked, so I'm just not going to do it in the church. Well, that's great, but what do you do in the church, you know? Um, it's good to be involved in a church. That's great. The problem is, is limiting either doing too much or too little. You know, um, even Jesus himself limited, you know, uh, when he's talking to the people, he limited himself. He's like, okay, I'm going to go pray. So he went and secluded himself, and he went and prayed. You know, uh, he saw that as important. He saw the, the need for that. Also, when he was traveling to different places, he would have, like, sometimes a couple days of time when he was traveling from one place to another. So he would have gotten a break between ministry uh, things. You know, even Jesus, you know, uh, the Son of God, the Son of Man, you know, the... the <laughs> The big guy, the big dog, even he was taking some form of breaks every once in a while. So, you know, just be sure that you're where you're supposed to be there. Um, if you start to feel drained, I would suggest, you know, it's, that's, that's, a, that's an indication that you need a break. Um, seek help uh, out of church. Um, there's psychiatrists, there's counselors. Uh, see, seek help in church. You know, there's pastors, there's elders. Um, then also there's there's resources out there to help you. There's there's your Bible. There's videos. There's there's books on restoring your spiritual passions and and not and getting over feelings of being drained. Um, so really just make sure that that you're not placing yourself in a position where you're going to do your spiritual man or even your physical man more harm than good. Um, number three is stop criticism on you, on others. Be aware and recognize if 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 you are a very critical person, it will always filter back to you. Um, you know, 
even if you're picking apart someone else, some, something someone else is doing, that negative attitude that you have is going to take a negative effect on you. So what you need to do is, every time that you, that you have a negative thought, every time that you're thinking something just critical that's not really helping anything, uh, then you just need to shut it off for a little bit, you know, and think more objectively. Um, um, now, I'm not saying Christians have to be, or worship leaders have to be, you know, in this uh, bubble where it's like, oh, well, I have to think happy thoughts all the time. No. And I do recognize that there's many times when negative things are going to happen. But when you're just being critical just to be critical, just because it's not being done your way or whatever, you know, where you're just being critical, you're picking apart either yourself, oh, I did a terrible job, I did, do, 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 you know, just going on and on and on about how terrible of a job you did, or if you're picking apart someone else, just being critical that doesn't have any positive outcomes. Um, and then, dear in, uh, uh, fighting burnout. Um, let's see. If others are doing it differently, encourage them. Um, uh, if God says to say something, say it. If not, don't. For instance, um, oh, I just feel like you need to know that uh, that's not how I would do it. Well, great. Did God tell you to go tell that person, or did you go tell yourself to go tell that person? You know. And I know I'm, I know I'm going fast, is because we have a lot to cover. Um, in fact, I'm going to stop this video here now, and then we'll pick up uh, with fighting burnout um, for when you're in, during it. So uh, I'll post the next video up soon. Uh, I'm sorry that I ran through it so fast. I'll try to make the, the next one a little bit slower. Thanks for watching.